All right, Cripple Creek, here we go. <laughs> Hey folks, here we are back again at the studio at Ellsworth Music. Uh, today I'm going to break down Cripple Creek for you. Uh, we're going to do three things. We're going to do the simple melody, we're going to do the easy bluegrass way, and then we're going to do the Earl Scruggs way based on the playing of Earl Scruggs. And I might get into a few little special licks and stuff like that. Um, so let's start out with the simple melody. Uh, the simple melody for Cripple Creek. And uh, if you go to the website, you can get these. You can get the simple melody. You can get the easy way. You can get all these things. All right, so here is the simple melody. And the melody starts up on this high G string. All right? Ding, ding. And then first string, second string. Next measure goes to the first fret, second string. Use my index, and then second fret, first string, and then open. All right, so let's put together the first two measures. All right, and the words that go right along with that helps if you learn the words. It goes, I got a gal and she loves me. And then third measure, she's as sweet as she can be, got that? Second string, she's as, third string, second fret, sweet, then open, she can be. Right, let's put this all together, the whole A part here. So when you're playing this, the melody, that's what you want to be playing in your head. Even when you're doing the complicated version. She loves me. She's as sweet as she can be. See? I got a gal and love me. All right, now the B part. The B part starts on second string open. Going up. Third string, second fret, then open. All right, now the second measure. All right, so going up, cripple creek, going and a run to the low string. I might have messed up there a minute ago. Going up, cripple creek, going and a run. All right, very important part of the song. Going up. B part, one more time. Again, go to the website, get the tab for this. You can look right at it. It's got the music and the tab. You can play right along with it. Take your time. What I'm going to do is I want to play two A's and two B's real slow. Follow right along with the music.
that's it for the simple melody. Next, we're going to look at the easy arrangement. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. This is the easy way. We're going to start off the easy way. Remember, get the tab down in the description. Get the tab. All right, this is the A part. Starts right off second fret, first string. You're going to pinch that and slide right up to the five. All right, no drags, nothing, just right up to it. So a drag is when you, you know, we're not going to do that yet. That's for the more advanced version. This is the easy one. You slide right up. And then once you get there to the five, you pinch it again. All right. You got it. One, two. So it's on every beat. And then open first, open second, middle, index. This, with this lick, you want to come right out of the gate, slam it. When I slide, start right up by that fret, right up to the fifth fret, make it sustain. Okay, now the second measure is a baby C chord. Little C, baby C. I tell my students baby C. First finger on the second fret, second string. I mean, first fret, second string. Second finger, second fret, first string. All right, now what you're going to do, you're going to hold that and you're going to do a forward roll right through it. So thumb, index, middle, thumb, and then open the first string back up, middle finger, and a pinch. All right, when you do it, you can just hold that C the whole time. Through the forward roll, and then lift. All right, so let's play the first two measures real slow. Right, try it again, a little slower. All right, now let's go to the third measure. This is a very important part of the song because it does what I call the Cripple Creek Lick. Cripple Creek Lick is a super important lick. That lick. Lick right there, I call the Cripple Creek Lick, and it's used in a ton of songs. It's used in backup. It's used for for everything, really. Um, and we're gonna study this. We're gonna spend a little time on this. I use middle finger, and I slide from two to four. All right, and I like that four sustain using the thumb. The important thing about this, you don't want you don't want that. I hear that a lot. You don't want to be sloppy with it. You want to go two to four, let it sustain. And then index on the second, then thumb middle. All right. Go slow. There you go. That's called the Cripple Creek Lick. There's many variations of it. All right, now, one of the questions I get about this lick is, when does the index finger actually come in after the slide? When you do the slide, how soon does that index finger come in? Does it come in at the same time? Because if, if you look at the tab, it looks like it's exactly at the same time. Actually, it's not exactly at the same time. It can be exactly at the same time, but it's right after is the way I do it. Um, it these, these little timing things is when, when you play that, when you finish that slide and stuff is what describes a banjo player. And what I mean is how you time slides and how you time hammers is what describes you as a player and what makes you different from other banjo players. Um, everyone has a little bit of different timing the way that they hear it. And you can work those times. I call it working the timings. You can, you can drag it. You can quick. You know, so there's, there's little different timings that you can do and it makes it sound different. And you get in, you get a repetition with it and it becomes sort of a stereotype of how you play. So the way that I would recommend doing it is you slide, sustain the four, and then hit the index. Like that. Then go through. Okay, now let's carry on here. Third measure. We're going to do the Cripple Creek lick. And then just the two. Just the second fret, third string. And you do the same roll. Thumb, index, thumb, middle. So... This is the entire third measure. Like that. Just the two. 
Now this is where um, the song gets its easy name. Um, in the in the Earl version or, or more tricky versions that you hear, like like you, what you heard me play uh, at the beginning of the video, that you do a pull off on it. We're not gonna do a pull off. We're not gonna do that yet because that makes it tricky. We're just gonna try to flow through it with just the two. So you do the two to four, and just the two. All right, now let's go to the fourth measure. Fourth measure turns it around. It's called the turnaround or the ending of the part. And that's on the fourth string, open, then second fret, and then open third string. Open G string to resolve it and finish it, and then a pinch. All right, and you want to play that slow. You don't want to play it fast. You play that in rhythm. Okay, uh, a lot of times I'll hear people rush that. You know, go too fast. You don't want to go too fast. Just because it's easy, don't go fast. Keep in rhythm. There are quarter notes right on the B. All right, let's play the entire A part real slow. All right, let's try it again. A little slower even. Now let's get into the B part. So the B part is three consecutive Cripple Creek licks. So you'll do the Cripple Creek lick three times in a row. All right, let's try it again. Remember that Cripple Creek lick, you hear me sustain that four? And reset it. You don't want to ever hear it. When you do two in a row, you don't want to hear it go back down. All you want to hear is slide up, then reset the finger like a typewriter. You slide over, then reset it. Okay, and after the third one, you play open fourth string. Going up a cripple creek, going in a run. Now you really want to get the sound out. It's remember. Um, when I did the basic melody, it helps to know that basic melody, what you're playing. The words really help here. Going up Cripple Creek, going in a run. So that run is that low note. Run. Going up Cripple Creek, going in a run. Pitch. All right, and then we'll continue with the same turnaround from the A part. Going up, just the two. So let me play the B part for you, and I'll say the words. I'm not the greatest singer in the world. We, we all know that. But I'm just sort of saying the words so you can hear how they hit. And this is what I'm saying in my head when I'm playing this song. Going up Cripple Creek, going in a run. Going up Cripple Creek to have a little fun. And a little faster. That's the easy version. Stay, stick around. We're going to do the more advanced version where we'll put some pull offs in there. See you in a minute. All right, here we go with the Cripple Creek, and this is, I call, the advanced version. Not a really advanced, but more of an intermediate version, uh, more based on the playing of Earl Scruggs. And it's, it's exactly like the easy version, just changes a few little things. All right, so what it changes is it does a drag or an anticipation slide. It goes. So you hold on to that two for a second, and then you slide up. So those first two bars are uh, almost identical, but you anticipate it. So it comes in, it starts in the last measure. One, two, three. The, the easy version goes one, two, three, four. It starts right on the first beat of the measure. This one starts actually on the last beat of the previous measure. I'm dragging in a drag slide. So you want when you do it, you want to hold on that two and slide up into it. Like that. Hold it. Let it ring for a second and then push it up. You gotta use that strength to get the sound out of the five there. Alright, it's the first two measures. Pretty similar. Now the third measure does the Cripple Creek lick. 
and then you pull it off. Pull it, then go to the index, and then move your middle finger to the second fret, fourth string. This is very tricky, especially for beginners. It's very tricky to get this just right. All right, so what I'm going to look at, we're going to look at the uh, second part of the third measure where that pull off is. You pull it off, and use your middle finger to pull it that way. Don't push it up. I mean, you, you can. some people push up. I, I never push up. I always pull down. Pull it, and then you pick the second string, first finger. And right after that, your middle finger moves down to the fourth string, second fret. And then middle finger up here. Timing note. That's the sound. You'll just have to practice that. It's, it's tricky. All right, and then the fourth measure, the turnaround part. The way that I do it, this is where it differs from Earl or the classic way that you do it. I do it a little differently. I do actually come up to the fourth fret. I use my third finger. I come up to the fourth fret. I go fourth string open, and then a timing note index. Fourth fret and middle. So it's thumb index, thumb middle, still thumb index, thumb middle row. Like that. So I'll put it all together. Alright, that's my turnaround. I like that going to the four, because that four sort of resolves the G better to me. I, I just kind of like the sound of it. And, and with all the timing notes. this A part for you here. First time through. All right, one more time. All right. Now, uh, what Earl does on the end of it that makes it different than mine is Earl does the Cumberland Gap lick as his turnaround. So he goes like this. Some people really like that. Uh, personal opinion, I just, I do it sometimes, but my version, I resolve like this. All right, now going on, in the easy version, you would do a pinch right there at the end, and then you would start back in. This version, instead of pinching, you pinch, instead of an open pinch, I'd say, you pinch with that second fret and drag it back in. So that's that anticipation slide. So when you go back to the A part, you're playing it twice in a row. Remember, this is on the tab. Um, when you're doing it twice in a row, instead of open pinch, you drag in like that. Okay, so I'm going to play it twice through. Second time when I was done and gonna, I'm about ready to go into the B part. I just pinch regular because I'm not dragging or anticipating anything on the B part. All right, so one more time through, real slow. Let's go into the B part. B part's almost exactly like the easy version, except it has my turnaround on it, where I'm doing the, the pull off and then O to four. All right, that's that's really the only difference. I'll play it for you here slow. To practice it. The trickiest part of this is that that pull off. Very tricky because you got to get your finger over there. It's really tricky to do. Just be really patient. And you can riff that. 
Uh, riffing stuff is um, something I recommend to all my students. Riffing means you play it over and over again. That Just that little part, and you kind of make a song out of just that part, riffing it. Kind of a boring song, or I don't know, not, not the best song in the world, but you're kind of making a song out of it. I'll play the uh, what I call variation one or the variation, the intermediate um, arrangement here. Here we go. And that's a breakdown of the, uh, the three arrangements of the song, the basic melody, the easy version, and then the more intermediate version. All right, now, for all the advanced stuff that you heard me do on the, uh, when I played it the first time through at the, at the start of the video, well, a lot of those were improvisations. Again, I used licks from other songs. I just improv it. Played it kind of however I felt like playing it, and that's where you want to get to. Keep learning these songs. Keep learning these licks and perfect them be able to riff them, be able to use them in any song, and you'll be able to do that too someday. Keep at it, keep practicing. Signing out here from Ellsworth School of Music. See you next time.